What's up guys? So the past couple PC build videos that I have done, I've gotten a bunch of questions in the comments asking about where specific things need to get plugged in on your motherboard, whether it be an AIO or a CPU cooler, uh, fans, uh, from panel connectors. So I wanted to make this video to answer a bunch of those questions. So I will be using my ASUS Z390 e gaming motherboard to sort of go through the connector setup, lay out what needs to get plugged in where, uh, but this should be pro but this should be relevant to whatever motherboard you have, whether it's ASUS, MSI, EVGA, they should be pretty similar. Your connectors might be in slightly different spots, or you might have a proprietary connector on your motherboard that isn't on this ASUS and vice versa, but this should definitely answer a bunch of your questions. And if you have any other questions that I don't answer in this video, definitely leave those in the comments below and I will try my best to answer those questions. So let's jump into our motherboard. So here we go, we're gonna jump back and forth between just a base motherboard picture uh, so you can see the actual connector, and then we'll jump to my specific motherboard so you can see exactly where things get plugged in. But starting with our just base ASUS Z390 motherboard, let's just go through a bunch of these connectors. So you have your, up at the top left up here, you have your eight pin CPU connector. So this will come directly from your power supply into your motherboard and it will be labeled most likely CPU power or something of that nature. Your PCIe power connectors will be what gets plugged in to your graphics card. And then as we move to the right of the motherboard, just to show you the last sort of direct connection to the power supply, you have your 24 pin ATX connector and that will be the biggest one coming from your power supply and that will get plugged in to that connector on the right side of the motherboard and that should pretty much be in the same spot for every single motherboard. So then if we switch over to my particular motherboard, you can't see the eight pin, but it is up here uh, for the CPU. And then you have our 24 pin connector over here on the right side of the motherboard. So those are two connections that you're definitely gonna have to make. No matter what your setup is, you're gonna need those power connectors running from your power supply to your motherboard. And then just taking a look at our fan headers on our motherboard. So depending on your specific motherboard, you're, you're gonna have a different number, different placement. But just to go through these, you have two uh, fan connectors right here, both for your CPU. And you can see that they're labeled CPU OPT, so a CPU optional fan. And the bottom one is CPU fan. So that is the one that if you're going to use an actual uh, air cooler on your CPU, you would plug it in to that CPU fan header. The motherboard will monitor that particular header to make sure the CPU is actually being cooled. Uh, and then as we move down on the right side of the board, you can see these three headers down at the bottom right. And those are just three chassis fan headers. So maybe you have three fans on the front of your case. You want to plug all of those into either an individual header or you want to maybe uh, daisy chain all those together and then plug it in to one of those to control your chassis fans. Uh, and then as we move over to the left side of the board, you have an AIO pump header and another chassis fan connector. So the AIO pump header is what you're most likely going to plug into if you are using an AIO uh, water cooler on your build. So that will control the actual pump. It'll send a signal to whatever's controlling that pump uh, in order to sort of act as a fan uh, connector and, and tell the, the pump what RPM to spin at. So those are all of your fan connectors on your motherboard. And when I take a look at my particular build, uh, you can see I have an AIO pump header uh, connected, and that is the only fan connector that I have connected to my actual motherboard. The rest of my fans are actually connected to a fan hub on the back of my PC, tucked away in the cable management spot. So if you are going to use something like an NZXT cam or Corsair fan hub, you won't actually need any of these onboard fan headers. You can just plug them directly into that hub and that hub will be connected over USB 2 to your motherboard. So then you're just sending a signal from the motherboard over USB 2 that you can then control through software uh, inside of Windows to control those fans rather than controlling them inside of the BIOS on your motherboard. So there's a couple different ways to do it. You can either use the fan headers on the motherboard directly or use a fan hub and connect the fans to there and then control it with software inside of Windows. So those are our fan headers and our power headers on our motherboard. Of course, let's just go over the basics. And I sh probably should have started here, but in the center, of course, you have your CPU. Uh, over on the right, you have your four RAM DIMM slots. 
uh, and then you have your PCIe connectors, and we'll go through each one of those individually. So let me just clear this off, and if we go through our PCIe headers, you have uh, on this particular board one, two, and three uh, by one uh, PCIe slots. So they only have one lane directly to the CPU or the chipset, and those will be used for some adding cards, whether they be Wi-Fi or audio, something that doesn't actually need a full by 16 connection to your motherboard and to your CPU, but can do it via uh, a 1X slot. And you can still plug in those 1X cards to a 16X slot or an 8X slot, but you don't need to. So these two uh, longer uh, PCIe slots that are actually covered in silver or that have those, those silver ridges around them are for a, a by 16 slot. And this will very much depend on your particular motherboard. So definitely consult your manual. They could either be by 16 or by eight. If you're going to plug a graphics card into the, one of these slots, you're gonna most likely want it to be a by 16 connection to your CPU. Uh, and you're gonna wanna plug that into the top most uh, by 16 slot. And that will most likely be on every single motherboard, the top, the biggest PCIe slot on the motherboard at the, the top most one will be the one to plug your graphics card into. So we have two by 16, and then at the bottom we have another by 16, just not really meant, if you're gonna run two cards in SLI, so two graphics cards at the same time and connect those with SLI, you'd use these top two uh, connectors and then you'd use this bottom one if you had another add-in card. So as you can see, I just have my uh, graphics card plugged into the topmost PCIe by 16 slot not running two graphics cards or anything like that, just a 1660 Super, and that gets plugged in to the top slot. And then your one other major connection, which might be on your motherboard, might not be, is an NVMe slot for an NVMe SSD. So we have two of these on our motherboard. Uh, you have the, the topmost one and this bottommost one, and I am using the top slot on my motherboard, and that is for my 500 gig NVMe SSD, so most likely on the higher end motherboards, whether it be the Z series from Intel or the X series or even the B series from AMD, you should see an NVMe slot on your motherboard and this will just allow for blazing fast SSD speeds and that is where you will plug in your NVMe uh, SSD. So it sort of just goes in at an angle and then you're able to uh, screw that down into a, a standoff that is screwed into the motherboard at the back end of that, uh, that drive slot. So now that's pretty much all of the major connections outside of our internal USB headers, uh, sound for the front panel, and the front panel connectors for power and reset and things like that, and then our SATA connections as well for all of our either hard drives or just regular SSDs. So let's go through where those most likely will be on your motherboard or what you should be looking out for on your particular board. So if you have a case with a USB-C header on the front panel, that USB-C header will look just like this. So it'll be a smaller connector, uh, but that is where your USB-C header will get plugged in. Uh, and then at the bottom of the board, at least for my board, it might be slightly different from yours, uh, you'll have all of your USB-2 and USB-3 headers. So USB-2 is uh, a series of five pins on the top and four pins on the bottom. There's always one pin missing from the corner of USB 2, and that is where you'll plug in your front USB 2 uh, connectors. So you have two of them on this board, one here and one here. And then that middle one is our USB 3. So USB 3 will be slightly longer uh, and smaller pins uh, for that particular connector. So that's USB-C, USB-2, and USB-3. Uh, you do have a couple other connectors uh, down at the bottom here, uh, but these, for the most part, these three won't necessarily really be used, and neither will this one down here. It's a COM port, a TPM uh, connector. So for the most part, we won't be using those at all on your motherboard, unless you have a particular feature that will be using that particular connector. Uh, and then down here, and for the most part, it's always at the bottom left, will be your uh, your sound connector for your front panel audio. So if we switch over to my motherboard, you can see I am using my USB-C, I am using a USB-2, a single header, a USB-3, uh, and this USB-2 is actually being used for my fan hub. Uh, and then over on the left, you can see 
our uh, sound or, or front panel audio connector over on the left. And those are the only real connectors that I'm using at the bottom of the motherboard outside of our front panel. And we'll definitely get into that very, very shortly. But before we do, we also have our set of SATA connectors over on the left where you can see I have three different drives plugged in. So I have one SSD and two hard drives plugged into my PC. So all of those are plugged in on the right side and our SATA six gigabit per second ports. And most boards will have six of those. This particular board has them laid out where the connectors can come off the side of the motherboard. Others will have them pointing straight off. Doesn't really matter, but that is where the SATA ports will most likely be on the right side of your motherboard. One of the other small features for this motherboard is actually onboard LEDs or debug LEDs. Some higher end motherboards will have this even more detailed with an actual debug code uh, that will signal a specific number that will tell you whether it's a memory issue or a CPU issue if there's a problem with your motherboard. So those are where the particular RGB LEDs are for this motherboard. They will be definitely not located specifically there on every motherboard. Some will have them on the back IO where your USB connectors are and your HDMI and all of that. Others will have them on the board itself like this one. But the last thing is our front panel connectors. And for pretty much every board, it's going to be at the bottom right. So you can see down here, I have my bottom right uh, front panel connectors plugged in and those will be for your power button, your reset button, uh, HDD light, power light, all of that will get plugged into there. And some cases will have those front panel connectors grouped and bundled together. Some you can split those off into specific spots, but I would definitely, definitely either consult the board itself, which should have some codes as to where things get plugged in or the motherboard uh, manual itself in order to figure out exactly where those connectors need to go. Every board can be slightly different. So definitely just check with your owner's manual to see where things need to get plugged in. And then the last thing that I wanted to touch on is our RGB connectors. So these would be like ARGB connectors for either LED strips or specific ARGB components uh, that you wanna plug into your PC. So for this case, if we take a look on our base uh, motherboard, cause I do not personally have any ARGB connectors plugged into the motherboard itself. Everything that I have uh, for my uh, case fans, for the RGB case fans is plugged in to a Corsair a hub for those LEDs. But on this particular motherboard we have one connector down here and one connector at the top. And those RGB headers are just a four pin, normally with the white base uh, that will get plugged into whatever RGB features that you have for your PC. So there you go guys, those are all of the connectors that you should really need to know about and where you need to plug things in on your motherboard. Like I mentioned, if you're gonna be using a, uh, an AIO a CPU cooler, you wanna plug into that AIO pump header on your motherboard. You also wanna go in to your BIOS and turn off CPU fan monitoring. So that will actually monitor that your CPU fan is actually working. But because we're not plugging anything into that CPU fan header, we're just using that AIO pump header, then we're gonna to wanna to shut that off so the, the motherboard itself doesn't monitor a fan. You can also actually plug in your AIO uh, into your CPU fan header. So that will sort of avoid that issue. But it, most likely I would recommend to just use the AIO pump header on your motherboard. So if you are gonna use a, a, an air cooler on your CPU, then you do of course have your CPU fan headers and you have all the other motherboard fan headers for your chassis fans. And, and the fans are probably the most difficult piece to know exactly where to plug things into. So I hope this cleared things up. Besides those, I hope you guys learned a little bit about all of the other connectors and where things go and what things do. But if you have any other questions, like I said, definitely leave those in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, if you learned something, if you got something out of it, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, definitely get subscribed to the channel, turn on post notifications so you can stay up to date on all my latest videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one.